Why spring cleaning always have to come after winter? What the hell is this? Oh my god, I thought I had these destroyed after Wilson Gate. Yeah, we'll soon fix that. Where's my evidence destroying hammer? Hey, I'm Carrot Juice. Don't be upset. Today's the greatest day ever. In fact, let's give each other gifts. Yoink! Hi! Doodles! Get back here, you evil nest quick buddy! Oh my god, I'm at Maeve Cafe at the Adams Family. Hello, my name is Malice. Are you quite alright? Yeah, fine. I was just looking for a... A black rabbit? You... yeah. Carrying a hard drive? Yeah! And you escaped from the American McGee Institute, hoping that if you bring him back, it'll prove to the world that you're not a psychotic maniac? That's a hard no, but two or three ain't bad. So, have you seen him? Oh, yeah, that way. Ooh, hi -hi. <laughs> Oh, what the hell's going on here? Here, drink this. It'll make your tolerance for overused cliches ten times smaller. What the hell are you talking about? I'll oh, forget it. <laughs> what is this, some sort of LSD land? You're not too far off, actually. It's Burton Land. <laughs> Christ. God, look at this place. Like a coloring book if the only crayon available was gray. Oh, come now. It's not all that bad. At least it's creative. <sighs> yeah, the first million times, sure. But the million then one... The... Just as bad as when he took over Disney's Alice in Wonderland. Oh, but I love that cartoon. No, not that one. I hate the fact that I have to make that distinction now. No, I'm talking about Disney's Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> That was a big hit. If it was so bad, why did it make so much money? Oh, I can answer that. Oh God, it's Danny Elfman. What's the matter, critic? I thought you enjoyed my musical composition. Yeah, for the first ten years. Now all your stuff sounds like the filler music you skip on soundtracks. Oh, but critic, don't you know that kind of repetition is what makes Burton Land so popular? It's Tim. Baton! The spirals everywhere. It's Tim. Let's get you fucked up hair. It's Tim. Where everything is style over substance, but it looks good, so who cares? It's Tim! It's Tim. Baton! All angles are skew. It's Tim. With foggy lenses, too. It's Tim. Where all supporting characters are kings holding the movies on the wings, and all the leads are about as interesting as glue. It's Tim! This world of such uniqueness has been done a million times. A dark and gloomy outlet for some further nights to whine. And though it's saying little, hipsters think it's saying more. It's selling much more whiteness than a rich albino whore. Remakes, reboots, they're making us a ton of loot. And anything that's new is rare. And yes, the style's showing wear and tear, but all the profits clearly there. And will it get old? We don't care. Try something different. We don't dare, cause our supplies are dark and dies are making millions by the share. Tim Burton! Very good. Uh, we're looking for the Black Rabbit. If and you don't now, know. the rendition with the whimsical choir that can only sing in vowels. <laughs> I beg pardon, but this doesn't help us. If you could just direct us... Well, I tried to be nice. Excuse me. Oh my god, what are you doing? Oh god, no, not that! Oh no, put that back in my body! Oh no, I need those! I need those! Oh god! Oh Jesus Christ! He says we just follow that road. Goody. 
you go in front of me while I start the review. Very good. You seem so nice. We see a young Alice being awoken by nightmares as her father tries to put her asleep while discussing trading and business. I see strange creatures. What kind of creatures? There's a dodo bird, a rabbit, in a waistcoat. You're mad. Bonkers. Off your head. I think this calls for a good bleeding. That's what solves every problem in this time period. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. <laughs> So father's so perfect he surely has to die soon, die soon after Alice's 19th birthday. This leaves her with a mother who's certainly a product of the times, who is not willing to accept Alice because, of course, she's ahead of her time, and doesn't realize that the ahead of the times cliche has been done so many times that it actually makes it behind the times. Where's your corset? I'm against them. But you're not properly dressed. Who's to say what is proper? What if it was agreed that proper was wearing a codfish on your head? Would you wear it? To me, a corset is like a codfish. And now it's time for tired oppression cliches for tired free-spirited whippersnappers. And no stockings. Oh, most unorthodox. I was wondering what it would be like to fly. Oh, how uncivilized. My father said he sometimes believed in six impossible things before breakfast. Oh, heavens to Betsy. When in doubt, remain silent. Oh, much better. Do you know what I've always dreaded? Ugly grandchildren. Oh. How very proper! I don't know if I want to marry him. Whoa! How obviously not stuck up and wrong! I hope no other character in any other movie ever made repeats what she does in this film! That would be Randy! Hamish, do you have a tire of Codville? On the contrary. I find it invigorating. Uh, yeah. Bad screenwriting 101, guys. A good writer focuses on what a character is, not what a character isn't. We know that Alice isn't following the norm, isn't as submissive as her peers, and isn't going to be told what to do. Well, okay, that's all fine and good, but what is she then? Um, blander than bread? I can see you're very close. Look, you won't mention this to your sister, will you? I don't know. I'm confused. Are you sure she's not a product of the emotionless Victorian era? The gardeners have planted white roses when I specifically asked for red. You could always paint the roses red. And of course, as it goes, all the things that Alice will come across inevitably will work their way into her fantasy world as well. Like the owner complaining about the white roses, talking to Tweedle kinda and Tweedle sorta. And of course, what seems like an insane society needing to be challenged. Will you be my wife? This is happening so quickly, I am. So she turns down the proposal of one of the lesser Weasleys, mostly because she sees the white rabbit? Wait a minute. So they're clearly establishing that none of this is a dream and that it's all reality? Okay, despite the fact that this is clearly going against what the original book was doing, why would all these obvious symbols that worked its way into the fantasy be presented? I mean, what's the point if it's all real? I mean, it's suddenly being like, Oh, hey, Santa Christ. Hello. What are you doing here? I don't know. So, of course, Alice follows him down the rabbit hole, and things look pretty promising, as the wacky and nonsensical spirit of Wonderland seems to be shining through. Yeah, now all she needs is a script that says, write me. She, of course, shrinks down, wearing a convenient mini dress that she had on her... Maybe she was gonna play goth Barbie later. And enters the rather gray and blurry world of Wonderland. There is no life I know phoned in lie computer generation. I told you she's the right Alice. I am not convinced. Oh, I'm sorry. Eek, or emotional reaction, or... I don't know, I guess I'm sticking with nothing. She's the wrong Alice. Mm, if she was, she might be. Absalom will know who she is. I'll escort you. Hey, it's not been your turn. You'll notice quickly that all the characters speak to her like they've encountered her before. And that's because they have. Yeah, I bet you thought you were going to get the story of Alice in Wonderland, didn't you? God, I don't know how the fuck you got that stupid idea. But no, this is a semi-sequel, not based on the semi-sequel, because all the logic they semi-throw in, semi-makes no sense. Unroll the oraculum. They inform her that the Red Queen has taken over with her evil Jabberwocky, and that this ancient calendar, which is never wrong, claims that she will defeat it. 
It tells of each and every day since the beginning. Frabjus being the day you slay the Jabberwocky. That being you there with a the Vorpal sword. No other swords can kill the Jabberwocky. Oh great, another prophecy story. You know, why are these so popular? Why does everyone go along with something because the prophecy said so? What reliable source do these prophecies come from? Who writes them? How do we know they can be trusted? Sir, Wonderland is checking up on their prophecy. I told him to check that weird calendar thing I made up. And Narnia? I, I don't know. A beaver shall lead the way for the bed knobs and broomsticks kids with the Lion King. Dune? A chosen one. Matrix? A chosen one. Phantom Menace? A chosen one. Jesus? Um, let's leave that one up to interpretation. I don't see anyone going too crazy over that one. Hey, is it me or does that guy look familiar? Nope. Oh, okay, it must be one of those fish. Ah! Hey, hey, hey! Ah! Oh, happy day, oh, happy day. <laughs> What's he so happy about anyway? Ah! Who in the blazes are you? If you're looking for strangeness, you needn't look harder. For he's Tweedle Depp and I'm Tweedle Carter. Oh, that's right, the ceremonial Johnny Depp and Helena Bottom Carter appearances. But I thought that they were talented actors playing a variety of characters. They were until they found their niche playing crazy, eccentric, homeless looking people. For I'm the Mad Hatter and her the Red Queen. We chew up the scenery scene after scene. We act through bad wardrobe and hair that's insane. And makeup so thick it rival Hunger Games. We bulge out our eyes. And twiddle our fingers. Doing this gets us both round near ten figures. Yes, and as you'll notice, neither of them really do anything different. After Alice escapes one of the Queen's monsters by being defended by a mouse, in the most PG way possible, by the way, <laughs> a family bitchin. She comes across the Mad Hatter, who is apparently so mad that he keeps alternating between accents. You're absolutely Alice, I'd know you anywhere. I'd know him anywhere. The Jabberwock with eyes of flame, jaws that bait and claws that catch. Investigating things that begin with the letter M. Of course, but now you're back, you see. And we need to get on to the Frabjus Day. You have any idea what the Red Queen has done? You've lost your muchness. Juggling, slurking your pulse. Bar no more! Of course, his not very lunacy is only offset by Helena Bottom Carter's not very lunacy as she plays the Red Queen. And actually, at first, it almost kind of works. Because in the beginning, she seems to get upset over stupid, silly things. Like who ate her tarts. Did you steal my tarts? No, your majesty. Squidberry juice. I was so hungry! Open his head! That's in keeping with the nonsensical spirit of the book. But... For whatever fucking reason, they keep bringing in this political power struggle and talk of the prophecy, and that's not what Alice in Wonderland is about. It's supposed to be a fun road trip of dreamlike nonsense, an escape from reality through creative surrealism. It's supposed to be a childlike experience, not a fucking war movie. But listen, these characters constantly talk like they're in a war movie. When the White Queen once again wears the crown. Like not slaying anything. Down with the bloody big head. The entire world is falling to ruin. We're going to rescue him. That is not for so. Down with the bloody Red Queen! Oh, come on. Could you see the Mad Hatter getting involved with a cause? The communist flag will rise! <laughs> Can you see the original Cheshire Cat getting invested with freedom fighters? I never get involved in politics. Oh, is that why you constantly get involved with political movements every couple of scenes? Goodbye. Why bring sense and logic to a world that celebrates having no sense and logic? It just sucks the fun out of it. Who would want fun when there's gloom instead? That's like talking through your teeth, not hearing what's said. I'm wearing stripes. I apologize, but they annoy me. Doing I'm going to kill them. What is wrong with you? You're usually so nice! Stop killing people! Oh, I'm afraid I already did when you looked over there. What? I didn't look over there. Damn it! You really did escape from a mental institution! Well, I assume you did too, given how you're dressed. Yeah, but I'm a celebrity. When you dress weird, it's crazy. When I dress weird, it's on my card. lets Alice know that Wonderland used to be ruled by the White Queen, played by Anne Hathaway, until the Red Queen summoned her Jabberwocky to destroy everything.
Oh, the heartbreaking tragedy. If only there was some sort of warning they could have had to prepare them for this. Like a calendar that predicts the future and is never ever wrong- Wait a minute! Didn't they say that fucking thing predicts whatever's gonna happen? It tells of each and every day since the beginning. Well, why the flying hell were they just partying then? Did they miss the part where we all burn and get our asses fried? You'd think somebody would put a goddamn bookmark on that section, wouldn't you? That white queen's doing a heck of a job. Hold on tight, please. So the Hatter sees the guards coming, thus swings Alice away on his hat. Which, by the way, even then she looks disinterested. Oh no, I guess. And he's taken away. Thankfully, one of the guards' dogs finds Alice, but she discovers that he's a spy for the Rebellion. Would your name be Alice, by any chance? Yes, but I'm not the one that everyone's talking about. The Hatter would not have given himself up just for any Alice. Yes, that would be mad. And nothing in his name indicates he'd be anything like that. We're going to rescue him. That is not foretold. I've been accused of being Alice and of not being Alice, but this is my dream. I'll decide where it goes from here. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Alice this whole time, I mean like 80% of the goddamn movie, totally believes that this is all a dream. This is my dream. This is my dream. It's only a dream. I'm still dreaming. Wake up from this dream. Time can be funny in dreams. Sometimes I forget that this is all a dream. I would dream up someone who's half mad. You know, I think there's only so long a person tells themselves that they're asleep before fucking reality starts to take effect. I mean, the dream excuse can only get you so far before your other senses start to kick in. For example... Oh! It's okay, it's just a dream! Oh! It's okay, it's just a dream! Okay, it's just a dream! You see? On top of that, if she does think this is all a dream, what does she care what happens to the Hatter? What does she care if it's her fault? She has no obligations in a dream! Though, then again, maybe that would explain why her performance is about as invested as Willy Wonka saving a bratty child. I'll decide where it goes from here. If you diverge from the path... I make the path! Stop, don't come back! So she makes it to the castle where, again, in a PG film, she climbs over the severed heads in a bloody river of the Queen's victims. A Disney picture! And eventually comes across the captured White Rabbit. I've come to rescue the Hatter. You're not rescuing anyone being the size of a gerbil. Would well, he have any more of that cake that made me grow before? Actually, I might have some left. And this is another reason why Wonderland doesn't work as a strategic world of war. There's cake that makes you grow huge. Whoever has that shit, battle over! You win! Mass produce that shit and make an army of King Kongs! You could squash this place like a Lego city faster than you can say curiouser and curiouser! It's like if Malice and I had some of that cake and we suddenly came across a threat. <laughs> I am the terrible Jibber Jabber, writer of these terrible movies. Allow me to make your lives more needlessly complicated. Oh dear. But no! Rather than kill the queen in her tracks, even though she's a giant, she makes up a story about who she is. Why? What's the purpose? She could bite her head off like a fucking animal cracker! I've been growing an awful lot lately, so I've come to you hoping you might understand what it's like. Anyone with a head that large is welcome in my court. Okay, whatever. So the queen takes her in, and Alice eventually tries to break the hatter out, as well as find the sword to defeat the Jabberwocky. Tweedles. Alice! How do you do again? Where's the rabbit? Over there. Oh, ho, ho, that's Wonderland. Nothing makes any sense. Wait, now they're taking her to where he is. But you just pointed in the opposite direction. Are you taking him there or are you not taking him there? Wait, I is there any goddamn consistency in this place? Should we just rename the characters the kinda Mad Hatter? Should we change the phrase to just a little quirky but still totally reasonable as a March Hare? But before she can get the sword, she has to deal with this weird scene with the leader of the guards played by Crispin Glover. I like you, um, I like largeness. Wow, Burton's really working through some issues with this movie, isn't he? Next, she'll be telling me he has a thing about rats. <laughs> so she does find the sword and manages to befriend the beast by giving him his eye back. She's unable to save the Hatter, but the beast does carry her over to Epcot Gondor, where the White Queen awaits. Come with me. Get only for your soup, you bosom! 
Could use some salt. That's my attempt at being funny. It'd be funnier if I was funny. Wait a minute. They're shrinking her down? Why the flying fuck are they shrinking her down? She has to fight a gigantic Jabberwocky, remember? Did we forget our little stomp talk? Come on, guys, this makes about as much sense as the Cheshire Cat wanting to help the Rebellion but uses his godlike powers just to save one person. Good morning, everyone. Oh, come on! He could turn into Godzilla and squash the place if he wanted! There's a bajillion things he could have done here! He could win this war in a blink of a goddamn eye! But hey, like he said... I never get involved in politics. Only when bad writing dictates so. Goodbye. So the Mad Hatter is saved, but they still had to figure out how Alice is going to defeat the Jabberwocky on the day of battle. Which, of course, shouldn't matter, seeing how even now she still thinks this is all a dream. Thank God this plot thread has a running time past five seconds of tolerance. You still believe this is a dream, do you? Of course. This has all come from my own mind. Okay, honey, no offense, but you're way too boring to think up anything as creative as this. I think the most your mind could dream up is a paperclip on a rice cake. That's how exciting your imagination gets. And yet, in a confusing scene, even though they all know it has to be Alice, they ask who'll stand up and fight for the White Queen. Who will step forth to be champion for the White Queen? That would be I. No. Me. I'll do it. You have very poor evaporating skills. I should be the one. Oh, that's very big of you. Seeing how you never, never get, get involved, involved in, in politics. politics. Ghost Dan has more consistency than you. But then they remind themselves of what they already know. Alice has to do it. The choice must be yours. Because when you step out to face that creature, you will step out alone. Why? Because some magic toilet paper told you so? Why does any of this have to be this way? It doesn't. It's total bullshit. For a world that's apparently supposed to have no rules, there sure do seem to be a lot of... RULES! But wait, it gets better. The caterpillar reveals the great big shocking twist. Are you ready? Oh man, this is gonna blow your mind. Are you ready? It's so shocking, you're not gonna believe. Okay, you ready? Here we go, here we go. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Alice, this whole time, was Alice! Going to die. Wait, what? Alice. At last. What do you call yourself? Alice. Z. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. wait a minute, movie. So, are you suggesting that the Alice from Alice in Wonderland this whole time was Alice from Alice in Wonderland? Whoa, I, I mean, fucking whoa, this movie is pushing the envelope of cinematic twists. I mean, who could have seen that coming? That show be telling me that Clark Kent all this time was Clark Kent! Man, this movie knows how to keep you on your fucking toes! It wasn't a dream at all. It was a memory. This place is real. So are you and so is the Hatter. Ding, ding, ding! What do we have for her, Johnny? You were just as dim-witted the first time you were here. You called it Wonderland, as I recall. Wait a minute, what was that line? You were just as dim-witted the first time you were here. You called it Wonderland, as I recall. Well, if it's not called Wonderland, what is it called? Crimes against Underland. 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 So let me get this straight. In Alice in Wonderland, the story based on the Lewis Carroll novel, Alice is not a girl, she's a woman. She's not in Wonderland, she's returning to Wonderland. And Wonderland itself, in fact, isn't Wonderland at all. It's called Underland. Underland? Under... It sounds like a made-up world in a Fruit of the Loom commercial. I I'm sorry. How the flying fuck am I supposed to take an adaptation seriously when you can't even get one word, one fucking word of the goddamn title right? I'm gonna say it. No, critic, no, no, I'm gonna say it. Critic, I'm sorry, no, it. don't hold me back, don't hold me back. I'm critic, gonna say it, no, I'm gonna say it, I'm saying it. It's pushed me this, I'm sorry, it pushed me this. Care Bears in Wonderland is a better adaptation than this! Yeah, come on, I said it! I said it! Who wants them? Come on, come on! 
Far from at least giving us what the fucking title promises, Care Bears in Wonderland and not Underland is still mad nonsense where everything is backwards. The villain of the movie wants to bring sense and order to it. That would be a legitimate threat to their world. So the fear in the movie is 100% justified. Here, the queen is just a jerk. But as long as she's as crazy as the rest of them, which she supposedly is, Wonderland, oh, I'm sorry, Underland, shouldn't care. Because unless you missed what was constantly hammered in, both the story, the book, every interpretation ever made, they're mad. They're all fucking mad. So what should they care about any of this bull crap? And don't get me wrong, Care Bears is an awful movie. It's really bad. They do some stupid shit like making the queen nice, a whole bunch of other fuck. But in terms of which one is closer to the spirit of what Alice in Wonderland is, I'm sorry, the fucking Care Bears got closer. They embrace the insanity of Wonderland. This one is a shame to even be called Wonderland. Fuck that shit. What? Um, speaking of things we're ashamed of. Hey, ooh, ah, ooh, yeah. oh. There he is! Let's go get him! Tim. <laughs> oh, God damn it, Burn! you're not even ripping off the right source material. Uh, you're destroying the Wizard of Oz. You'll need to do that. Sam Raimi already did that. Critic, why do you hate my work so much? I'm just trying to bring something creative and new. Then bring us something creative and new, not trying to destroy what was already fine with your tire cliches. I mean, look at this climax. I think the only reason you allow these adaptations to be so war-hungry is because you like getting shots of armies lining up. Seriously, look at all these movies that you've used them in. You're like obsessed with them. Hey, now come on. Those scenes came from Mars Attacks, Planet of the Apes, and Batman Returns. As we all know, those are critically acclaimed masterpieces, but they look so cool. We see Alice dressed up as Joan of Meh, and they have their dumbass little battle. We meet on the battlefield once again. That's enough chatter. I'm the wild eccentric one where I come from. And again, in our PG film, we get a rather gruesome decapitation of our fearsome Jabberwocky. Off with your head! A fiend leaping! Oh my god! Oh, oh, this is shocking! Oh, no! Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 oh. Bring the kitty. We follow you no more. So that takes the Red Queen out of power, Queen Uninteresting is in control again, and the Hatter feels he can finally celebrate by doing his dance. Oh, the head just did. Kalu, Kalu. Whoa, wait a minute. Is Wonderland, oh, sorry, Underland getting jiggy? I think it is. Boy, he ain't no paper man. He really swings out with a mess of jive. Oh my god, I haven't seen anything this crunk since I saw vanilla ice crack into the tune of macaroni and cheese. Oh, Hatter, you be dope. Okay, are you sure you didn't escape from a mental institution? So Alice goes back home, apparently wiser and somehow even blander. Sorry, Hamish, I can't marry you. I love you, Margaret, but this is my life. You're lucky to have my sister for your wife, Lowell. That is no prince, Aunt Imogen. You need to talk to someone about these delusions. Don't worry, Mother. I'll find something useful to do with my life. And you, you wanted a brain. What you don't have is a diploma. You and I have business to discuss. Shall we uh, speak in the study? Oh, and one more thing. My god, her boring personality is in direct conflict with our boring personalities. Most unorthodox! So she uses her newfound expertise in sword fighting and monster slaying into the trading business. Which this movie never mentions she has any knowledge of to begin with. It's vast, the culture is rich, and we have a foothold in Hong Kong. So she sails the wonder, oh, don't you mean under, where she sets to start her brand new life. Hello, Absalom. Really? That's our big closer? I've seen more thrilling conclusions out of bandstain bears. 
So, critic, what do you think of my blockbuster masterpiece? I'm sorry, I know a lot of people really enjoy this movie, but I just think it's awful! Oh. What should have been a match made in heaven turned into a needlessly complicated storyline from a seemingly simple source material. How can a movie based on a pointless book be even more pointless by trying to give it a point? On top of that, the film thinks that the more evil it can make the villains, the more interested we'll be in our heroes, rather than just writing the heroes interestingly. You can make it dark, you can make it intense, but unless you have a coherent story and characters that have a little bit more charm than snake vomit, it doesn't amount to anything. Sometimes the visuals are nice and once in a while it brings out a little bit of the zaniness from the book, but most of it misses the spirit, the charm, and yes, even the wonder that made Alice in Wonderland so great. I bet even Malice could do a more Tim Burton style Alice in Wonderland sequel than Tim Burton could. Come on, y'all knew we were going there. But Critic, I thought you liked my work. I did when you did original stuff. Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, The Nightmare Before <laughs> Christmas, those were all great. But now all you do is terrible remakes. Well, that's all part of being an artist, Critic. I mean, some ideas hit bullseyes and others are dead on arrival. But you just keep trying. Not if you keep living in another person's shadow. I mean, no good can ever come of that. I think this video begs to differ. What? No! Please don't hurt me. What is a creepy girl of indiscernible age? Some home movies of the critic's room when he was young. Please don't. Well, looky here. Looks like somebody was living in somebody else's shadow. Oh my god, you are a fanboy of me? It looks like he has a full corner of his room dedicated to you. Just really liked your work, that's all. And maybe I did a few fan drawings every once in a while. A lot of that looks pretty creative. Most of it's crap! But some of it's good. You see, Critic, just because you're interpreting someone else's work doesn't mean some good can't come out of it. After all, didn't you enjoy Sweeney Todd? Yeah, but... And didn't you like Big Fish? Yeah, but... And isn't one of your favorite movies of all time my adaptation of Batman? Yeah, but that doesn't excuse bad remake after bad remake. And Alice in Wonderland... I'm sure will never be remade again. Well, just because it's been done a million times before doesn't mean it'll be done a million times again. Critic, this is just how artists work. Sure, I'll make a lot of crap. But for every Dark Shadows, there's an Edward. For every Planet of the Apes, there's a Beetlejuice. In fact, my next movie is called Big Eyes, based on the artist who did that kitsch artwork in the 60s and all the trials and tribulations she had to go through. Actually, that sounds kind of interesting. And based on another source material. <sighs> Alright, for the good of the creative mind, I guess it's good to put up with some crap every once in a while. But wait, there's still one thing I never figured out. Why was the Black Rabbit so happy all this time? Oh, isn't it obvious? This is the first Tim Burton project to ever have a black man in a main role. No. There was Harvey Dent. Oh. Wait, no, he was in the main character. There was Oogie Boogie. Oh. No, he only came in the last third. Oh my god, you're right! See? You know, for a director who celebrates black and white, you sure do put a lot more emphasis on the white than you do the black. Nevertheless, go forth, my young one, back into the real world to look forward to the wonders that Burton Land will bring unto you. <sighs> I will, Mr. Burton. I know you won't let me down. I'm sure I won't eat. Tim Burton's eagerly anticipated Big Eyes has been canceled. Replaced with his latest cinematic creation, Adventure Time, starring Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter. I completely forgot whatever lesson I was supposed to learn. Like large.